Guys, and welcome to another episode here from the Offkit Garage in Australia. It's not sunny hot anymore. Middle of summer, raining, cloudy, 4.4 kilowatt hours today. It's like the worst nightmare came true. And before we get started with today's show, I quickly want to let you know what decision I made about the different solutions we had discussed in the last videos, one of the last videos. Um, we had like three different solutions to cable the AC and DC connections here to the inverters. While well, solution A was having like holes here in the aluminum sheet and then have the cables going behind the aluminum, going down into the cable tray up to the AC distribution section over there, while the DC cables running on top of the aluminum sheet and then up to the inverter. So there was no physical crossing for the cables then possible and it's a clean and nice installation then. Well, I think it got around two or three volts, if I can remember correctly. And solution B was, well, we don't give a sh We will have crossings. We just pull our DC across here into the inverter and the AC is coming out here, going all the way down into the tray. And we will have a crossing from AC and DC over here. And the same with this inverter somewhere over here another 90 degree crossing no parallel cables in one duct just a 90 degree crossing would be another solution right and this solution with the crossing had about four or five volts and then of course we had the very very popular with 99.9999999 percent of the volts were solution c where we pull the ac out here and all the way up across there and then coming down from the top to the AC section while we have the DC coming from the bottom here and go all the way up to the inverters then. No holes, no crossing, but a lot of work because we have to cut all this cable duct. We have longer AC runs. So, well, even solution C seems like the most obvious one because so many people have voted for it and have said, well, I have done exactly the same. AC is coming from the top. DC is coming from the bottom. There's no crossing. They are really separated and there's no confusion. It's clean, easy and as it should be. So obviously I have to go with solution C, but I decided to go with a very unpopular solution A. So we will cut holes in the aluminum sheet here and then put all the cables from here in conduit going down behind. I'm just kidding guys, I'm just kidding. We are not going to drill or punch or saw or cut any holes in this aluminum sheet here anymore. We've done this before and well, it didn't work. Once the cable is in this corrugated conduit, you will never get it out again because these bends are so sharp, there's no way for any future upgrade at all, unless you have to take everything apart again. And this was one of the main reasons to start all over again in the first place, to get rid of all these conduits. And I said, well, this is not working. If we need to replace cables in the future for another upgrade, or if we change the functionality, how these two inverters work together, we need an easy solution to do that. And only a cable duct provides this solution. So obviously I go with solution C because this is the only one which will actually work even in the future. We can easily open up a cable duct, replace a cable, put more cables inside and have more functionality then. So I guess solution C it will be. Okay, let's get started. We will have DC supply from the bottom to the inverters on both sides and the AC will go out and above the inverters. Uh, maybe you can see it. I have already lowered both of the inverters here by around 100 mil. So of course I had to take off both inverters again, had to take off the sheets and drill new holes, measure this all, and then put everything back together. So this certainly took me a while. And here now you can see we have around 190, 185 millimeters now space to the top of the aluminium sheet here and the cable duct is only 50 so that gives us 130 millimeter at the top good clearance and we also have enough space down here now to get another main switch in here so we can turn off the inverters uh, at the positive side negative needs to stay connected all the time and guys funny funny 
I also went back to Heyman's electrical here and, and bought another four meter length of this cable duct, this 50 by 50. And guess what? It is not sticky anymore underneath. This one isn't. And the other half of the cable duct I haven't used yet, not sticky. It was only the first two meters of this cable duct were sticky. Sticky as shit. These ones totally fine. And this time they were $11 cheaper than the last time. I don't know why. I think they are just making up prices there because I don't have an account with them. That's fine. Works for me. I have also mounted the AC distribution box here on this side already and have done all the measurement. So we will have the 50 by 50 cable duct here as well. And then going above the inverters, coming down to this inverter and coming down here to this inverter. So no crossing, no holes. I, um, I made myself actually a little matrix here with the solutions A, B, C, and then had different criterias there for, for crossing short DC cables and easy upgrade holes, long AC cables and all the kind of stuff. And then I said, well, what's the possibilities? What's the benefits of having this solution over this solution? And C is really the best solution because of the possibility to upgrade the system further down the track. We don't have to deal with any holes in the aluminum sheet, which we cannot use anymore with future upgrades. And we certainly don't have any crossings from AC and DC, low and high voltage anywhere. And also another Andy got in contact with me from uh, Munich. And he actually is going to help me with the programming of the multi because because I want to try the piggy bank solution. I want to try to hook up the multi to the Phoenix inverter. I want to find out if it really only outputs three KVA or not. So this will be our first installation. And if this doesn't work, we've got all the cable ducting ready to go. Then we can easily change the setup then to have them on separate circuits and have them working completely independent. But we talk about this when we are working on this section here because um, he actually figured out a very, very nice and it is such an elegant solution to link these two inverters. It is amazing. I, I super liked it when I read it. So we are going to try this solution first and see if it works or if we have two dead inverters then here. Well, then we have to buy new ones. <laughs> I don't know. I'm crying then. I'm crying and get drunk here. But then this morning I said, Andy, don't focus on the AC side here at the moment. This is all clear. It just needs to get done. Focus more here on the DC side. And as you can see here, this cable is already far too long. It, it, I wasn't quite sure which height it comes, so I left it a bit longer, but now it bites me back. Yeah, I have to cut them off a little bit. So this whole cable moves up because we need the space underneath here for the big 70 millimeter cables for both inverters then. And then I really want to connect the second charge controller as well to charge our battery here. So east roof is already there and this breaker for the west roof goes a bit to the left here and then there will be another SPD here for the west roof. I still haven't made up my mind how to cable these SPDs but I will make space in this switchboard here to actually put them in. And then we take care about the cabling later on if I have more information about how to do it correctly. Okay, so let's shorten these cables first and get this one connected. <sighs> this will be my task for tonight. Ah, also the uh, red heat shrink has arrived. That will be for another two solar charge controllers and the incoming solar cables. It just made the cable duct um, long enough, so I don't need to do it again. Yeah, unfortunately I have to use bare wires here to connect to the solar charge controller. I tried with the ferrules here, but I couldn't make it work. Obviously these ferrules, they are a bit too short for these larger terminals. These are 35 
millimeter terminals and this is only a 16 millimeter cable coming in. Well, if I just pulled a tiny bit, it slipped out again. So I couldn't really fit them in. Well, I gave up on that and we use now bare wires into the terminals, which is totally fine because these are these um, chambers here. So they fit perfectly and are bomb and fest. Okay, there you go. This is our incoming solar cables now from the main isolators here to our solar charge controllers. Um, I'm not sure if I leave this Velcro on here just for the moment to get this all organized here inside the duct. But I think before I put on the lid, I take this all off again. It depends how far the shelf will be away from the wall and how much space I have actually here to work. Because the, the shelf will actually end somewhere over here. So just where the duct starts. So I guess I would actually have space in there to get them organized like this. Let's see, make the decision later. So vote now. A, you want to keep... No, I'm not. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> I got this, I got this. Okay guys, so far this video from today, just quickly connecting our solar charge controllers to the main solar input fuses here. And in tomorrow's video we will, well I guess we will punch at least four holes in this back wall here to connect our solar charge controllers to our main breakers here at the front. And then I guess we can energize our bus bars for the very first time. So I will clean up this mess tomorrow here and then we can put the shelf back in its original place and see how much distance we actually need from the back to the shelf. And um, we just will put some spacers in between here to keep it away from the metal beam. But I still want to screw it here to the beam actually to give it stability. So I guess we shouldn't be too far off. That'll be amazing to have some voltage here on the bus bars for the very first time. Well, guys, in the next video. Until then, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support here on the channel. Generous donations again. Thank you very much. And until this next video, you stay charged and safe. And thank you again for watching. See you then. Bye bye. Wow, wow. I can't wait. I can't wait can actually connect our battery here to the main bus bar in here and have this all temporary connected and up and running. I can't believe we are that far. That'll be amazing. There's another one. But this one is the noisy one here. We call him the TikTok frog. Because he makes this talk sound all the time. All night long.